Hi, everyone. Thank you so much for joining us. I'm Emily, co-founder of Encora AI, and our mission is to improve access to clinical trials for everyone. And over the past few weeks, especially because October is Breast Cancer Awareness Month, we've been focused on wellness topics around breast cancer and cancer more generally. So you can check out our YouTube for recent content around exercise, around uh, psychological self-care and also um, a variety of other topics. So check out our social media. Um, and on that same theme, I'm so excited today to introduce our very special guest, who is the nutritionist Toral Shaw and founder of The Urban Kitchen. Hi, Toral. Um, she's Hi, joined us today. To We're so excited um, to talk about the link between nutrition and immune health. And before we jump in um, with Toral's expertise, I would love to give you a bit of background in case you don't follow her already on social media. You can see her handle here for Instagram at The Urban Kitchen. Her content is really incredible, accessible, and she has thousands of followers already. So check it out uh, if you haven't yet. Um, and so just to briefly introduce her because her list of accomplishments is very, very long. Uh, Toral has a bachelor's degree in cell biology specializing in cancer. Uh, she also has a master's in nutritional medicine and then specialized as a functional medicine practitioner in nutrigenomics. She is also the founder of The Urban Kitchen and through that business she works as a uh, food and health writer as well as a consultant. And in that capacity she's been featured very widely in the press so you may have seen her already. Um, and her specific focus is on disease prevention through nutrition, specifically around cancer. And she's just such a true thought leader in this area. So I'm thrilled again to introduce you, Toral. And just maybe to jump in, can you explain a little bit around why you decided to specialize in this cancer and nutrition area? Yeah, absolutely. So my mother had breast cancer when I was at medical school. So I actually went to medical school with a view to become an oncologist. Uh, it was something I was really passionate about. I didn't really understand much about it because in the UK, we go to medical school straight after high school. So it's a very different, you, you often don't know much about what's actually going on in the, the actual working world. And when my mother had breast cancer, I kind of started to wonder why are we not helping her to recover with diet and lifestyle and talking about what foods can help her, you know, get through chemotherapy, radiotherapy, all the surgery she had. And I started to investigate this, and this is back in 1999, so quite early days for the Nutrition and Cancer Research, although the World Cancer Research Fund had already been set up and they were already researching the links. So that's when I really started to get involved and I started to kind of dig around. These are the days before um, research papers were all online. It was all in dusty kind of sections of the library and I'd be digging around and I'd be taking this stuff to my mom's oncologist and they would honestly just be like, what are you talking about? And obviously as the years have gone on, we now understand there's such a huge link between you know, nutrition and uh, cancer risk um, and also cancer prevention, but also just with the, the, you know, our overall health. Wow, yeah, it's incredible. And it's such an area that's um, gaining so much traction now that people are talking about. And we have a lot of our users on Encora um, really interested in this more holistic approach to treatment. So I think that's um, really incredible. And um, I, I know we said today would be around the immune system and nutrition, but I think it's really important maybe to explain a little bit about what the immune system is because, I mean, I have a PhD in, in bioscience and I don't think I could really tell you. So uh, maybe from, from the expert's mouth, can you explain to, to us um, why is this so important? I'm also going to share some slides, but you know, I think what we forget is the immune system is a hugely complex system and it protects and defends our body from damage from other organisms, like substances from our outside environment. It's also made up of a real network of cells and tissues and organs that work together and defend against pathogens. And I'm gonna show you kind of an example of it in a second, but I think what we forget is that it's busy working away all the time, silently and quickly. It's only when we have issues that we notice that it's not working when we get mm. sick. And so I'm just, let me share my uh, screen so we can uh, see some nice slides. Here we go. Whoops, there's a little bit about me. Perfect. So the immune system, you know, it is complex. And what's really important about this is that it needs to differentiate between our own cells and also foreign cells. And it's activated by a whole load of different things. So you don't need to understand 
like exactly all the different aspects of it but there are two two as two um, parts of it there's the innate system which is non-specific which is really the first line of defense so this is when uh, for example you come across some bacteria um or something like that and you wash your hands and you can you know, help yourself to kind of re your body recognizes them and kind of reacts against them so then if you cut yourself this is kind of what would happen and then your adaptive or specific is like the second line of defense it's way more specific it basically is how your anti your body learns to recognize different antigens so for example it would be chicken pox like most of us came across chicken pox as children and once you've had chicken pox once you don't normally get it again so you might get shingles as an adult, but you, your body recognizes the chickenpox virus and then it reacts against it and, and produces these antibodies. And so and it has a kind of, they have a memory. And so this is how your body protects you. With the first line of defense, it's almost like an army that comes in. It doesn't worry about who things are, who, what people are, but it just basically tries to catch and capture everyone and look after your body in that way. So I think it's really interesting to know the difference between this innate and adaptive and this first line and second line. So the, in the first line, kind of, they just kind of try and kill everything. And the second line, it's a lot more sophisticated and your body's kind of alert different you know viruses or different organisms to protect us and i think that's pretty interesting Definitely. and then a big, a big part of our immune system which i think we all forget is our gut microbiome what is the gut microbiome we have trillions of different organisms and bacteria a lot of them are beneficial within our colon and our kind of gut and they, we're starting to understand how important this is for our immune system um, and I just love all the kind of random facts around it like that our gut microbiome weighs up to two kilos in weight like the surface area of kind of the GI the gut micro you know inside our um, intestinal tract is like two tennis courts like I think it's all fascinating um, but the gut microbiome itself is basically all these different organisms that live with, within our gut there's lots of beneficial bacteria, but there's also lots of other organisms too, viruses and fungi and all sorts of things. And they really help support our immune system. And you know, you can say that a good 70 to 80% of our immune system is located in our gut microbiome. And partly it's because we don't have all the enzymes, or all the functions to actually um, support our own body, all the physiological functions. So are these beneficial bacteria live in symbiosis with us, that they live within us and they help us and we help them by providing a home and food. So I think it's really interesting. <laughs> And, you know, one of the things that they do is they produce these things called short chain fatty acids from the fiber in our food. And that's really protecting the gut. But it's also really, really important for the regulating the immune process, for healing, for reducing inflammation and protection against cancer and other diseases. Um, they also help train our immune system. They help regulate our nervous system and they produce vitamins and minerals like vitamin K, which we can't actually make ourselves as humans. So it's a super important part of our health. So the gut, how does this work with the gut microbiome and immune system? So as you can see, it's really complicated and we don't need to necessarily understand the nitty gritty of this, but our diet can really impact our immune system because with these short chain fatty acids that are, we make from fiber, they can help our train our immune system to actually react or not react or when it needs to react. It also protects us against pathogens, which are kind of bad bacteria and also trains our immune system. So we just need to understand that there's a real interaction between these beneficial bacteria and our gut microflora and our immune system. And all of this works together and that's where um, nutrition can make a huge difference to our immune system. And maybe you can just say a few words as well specifically for um, cancer, why this is also really crucial. So one of the things that's really important is that our cancer cells are our own cells which are growing up control. So um, the immune system is really important because it recognizes external cells but it also has to uh, recognize when our own cells are growing out of control so one of the parts of the immune system that is really relevant to cancer patients is that the immune system can try and catch cancer cells as they start to grow out of control and if our immune system is working better and it's optimized it can help to catch these cells before they kind of grow out of control and before they can 
you know, create cancer and tumors. So this is where the prevention aspect often comes in and also prevention of recurrence. And so if our body is working really well and our immune system is working well, hopefully it'll catch these cells before they grow out of control. Does that make mm -hmm. sense? Yeah, and I had a question actually, Toril. I know um, everyone talks a lot about immune boosters, like you can get a wheatgrass shot or some lemon and ginger and really boosting the immune system. What's your view on that? Is that something we should be doing? So my view is no one wants to boost their immune system. We've also got to remember that our immune system is so complex, but it works in balance with everything else. So if you're trying to boost it, you're trying to make it more sensitive which means that potentially you could push yourself over to the other end and create autoimmune disease. And we know so many of us have allergic reactions and autoimmune disease now. So the word immune boosting kind of really irritates me. <laughs> Optimization <laughs> is better, but really that comes from, it's not about having these one off shots. It's about really looking after your diet, you know, from the beginning. So yeah, this brings us beautifully onto this slide. How do we improve the health of our immune system? we need to be eating a healthy diet and exercising, which really promotes the growth of beneficial bacteria, which protects us. So if you look at this amazing Mediterranean diet pyramid, at the bottom, it's actually not food. It's about eating with other people. It's about socializing. It's about exercising. It's about dancing. It's about movement. And we forget that that's a massive part. And I'll come back to how this you know, affects our immune system in a minute. But from the diet perspective, the more colors of, and the more fruits and vegetables and plant-based foods that we eat full of fiber, that's going to impact our immune system. So it's not about just having these one-off shots. It's about really regularly eating 30 plant-based foods a week. So that would range from different fruits and vegetables, whole grains, legumes, peas and beans, herbs and spices, nuts and seeds, and fermented foods. And then you're gonna to go to source of protein, like and fish and seafood are so super important to our immune system, but also our overall health. And then other meats and you know grains and breads and things like that, dairy products and meats and sweets. We wanna eat a little, about, a little bit of that. So that's where um, our immune system, you know, it's really important. But then you're probably gonna ask me, like what else do we need to you know, do to support our immune system? Then we'll talk about that in a second, but if we go to cancer, You'll see, uh, we know that from the research that sadly, 30%, 35% of cancers are affected by nutrition and diet. And what increases the risk? Eating kind of really nutrient sparse foods with really high sugar foods, low fiber foods, eating red meat, not having enough um, omega-3, which is like oily fish and like things like that. What decreases are it? Those kind of diets which are really preventative of cancer are Mediterranean kind of Japanese diets. They call that the Mediterranean diet, which I, I love. I love that. <laughs> um, having a balanced ratio of omega-6 and 3 fatty acids. This is really about us eating mm -hmm. less processed um, plant oils from corn and soya and things like that, and really focusing on really good sources of um, fats and oils, which are things from like salmon and avocado and nuts and seeds and, and that you know can help us to promote mm. this balance and having high levels of fiber and antioxidants in fruits and vegetables olive oil and wine and just eating this real color and what's interesting is that these other diets have a lot more cruciferous vegetables the cancer preventative diet so they have a lot more broccoli and cabbage and things like that which we know is really supports our gut microbiome which supports our immune system same with fish consumption so i think what we can start to see is a real link between foods that support our immune system and foods that support cancer prevention and we're really starting to understand that all of this starts young we need to be looking after our diet to support our immune system and then through our gut microbiome from when we're born. So obviously when we're born, hopefully we're breastfed and that will change our gut microbiome. Um, and then after that, what we eat as, and the first five years are really crucial to seed our gut microbiome. So mm -hmm. I think it's fascinating. Yeah, I love this. I especially love the, the pyramid that you showed with the physical activity and, and social relationships at the bottom. I've never seen this before. And I think that's really impactful just to think about nutrition as something more than just food. Um, so yeah, thanks for sharing that. And oh. this uh, kind of Eurasian, um, a Mediterranean diet 
um, as well. Um, it's really fascinating that link between um, nutrition, cancer, and immunity as well. And I know with the with the pandemic right now, a lot of people are really worried, especially cancer patients, about um, you know what they can do day to day to really um, yeah think about. I love this practical tips exactly. What what can we give people that's kind of simple tools um, to start on the right path uh, with nutrition, both for prevention of cancer, um, prevention of recurrence of cancer, and also just generally for the family. And I can just share from kind of my personal experience right now. It's um, it, I'm very healthy, thank goodness, at the moment, but um, also I feel very overwhelmed, especially with kind of going through lockdown, working, um, having a family. Um, and often I'm just really focused on convenience, even though I know kind of bigger picture, this is, you know, really, really important, especially for, for growing kids. Um, so yeah, what can you tell us about just day to day, how we can strive to be a little bit more nutritious? So my, one of my first things is think about what's in your cupboard. And this is literally a picture of my cupboard. As you can see, it's a, bit, a little bit messy. But I just <laughs> thought it was useful because if you can stock your cupboards and your freezer well, and it doesn't have to be expensive foods, then you can start to base your meals around that. So what is great? Frozen tinned fruits and vegetables. So you'll see that I always have things like plum tomatoes or roasted peppers or like different types of beans. And I'm not buying the expensive versions. I'm just buying the kind of supermarket essential ones. Whole grains such as rice, par you know, barley, spelt, couscous, tinder dried beans and legumes. Because you can base so many meals around that. And having olive oils and vinegars, herbs and spices, because they add all the flavor. And they're super concentrated um, forms of nutrition herbs and spices and they've got so many potent antioxidants and other polyphenols which are so important for immune health and for cancer health spices and also like pouches of ready cooked grains and lentils so obviously mm -hmm. i know every country sells different things but these kind of things are available now in all countries from what i understand from because i'm a fascinated with supermarkets but if you can keep <laughs> ready and then the other thing is fresh fruit and vegetables like buy what's seasonal. It's cheaper. It's much more nutrient dense. I what I do personally is I will spend two days, like two day times in the week. I will prepare a load of vegetables. So now it's kind of more autumnal. I'm chopping loads of things up and roasting them, and these will last really well in the fridge about three or four days so once you've got these vegetables prepped up then all you need to do is add a little bit of protein so adding a little bit of fish or adding a tin of beans doesn't take that long creating some really nice dressings with fresh herbs and olive oil um, and garlic and keeping that ready that will last in the fridge for two weeks is a really great way of adding flavor to vegetables um making adding spices to things so you'll see that i've got harissa there it's like a kind of a, a moroccan kind of spice base and i add that to things so i think it's really about trying to think ahead because the thing is if we just have our cupboards full of like really convenient high fat high sugar foods and we're going to eat that so if you don't buy those foods but you buy these other things and it's not about just eating oh i need to have a salad because it's not it's like we need to be having you know food that fills us up and is full of fiber so for me like what did I have yesterday? I ended up making like a salad with like loads of roast potatoes and like warm vegetables because it's getting colder in the UK um, as it is everywhere else. And so it doesn't have to be, you know, really complicated meals. You know, buying some good quality, you'll see at the back of the cupboard, some good quality ready-made dressings. You know, all of those things, ready-made spice mixes, ready-made spice paste can add flavor and then thinking about a couple of good books. You'll see there's a load of books behind me. Mm -hmm. A couple of good cookbooks which are plant focused, vegetable focused. Um, and I'm, you know, I'm a big fan of Ottolenghi, by the way, because they always have loads of really fun stuff in there. You know, once you've you know, established five or 10 recipes, then you can start making those over and over again. I love that. It's super helpful. And um, I actually have a couple of those cookbooks, should probably dust them off. <laughs> um, if you don't mind just maybe stopping the screen share as we wrap up, we can yeah. see your face a little bit better. And um, yeah, so I was just thinking as well, um, like uh, what else we can give people as resources. And I know you promised to um, kind of write up top tips in a, in a blog. So um, yeah, if you guys are interested, you can check out the link. I'll add it in the description here so you won't miss it. 
the one last thing I really want to talk about is vitamin D. And if you don't mind, I'm going to share my screen really quickly again, just because it's a really key point in this COVID time and cancer and for cancer patients. And vitamin D is so super important for our immune system. It's a non-steroid hormone, but it really promotes our immune system as anti-inflammatory. It activates our immune system. It encourages the function of it. But if we go back to cancer, it's really important to help catch that vitamin D activates the immune system so it can catch some of these cells which are growing out of control. Now, what we know is that virtually all cancer patients are deficient in vitamin D. Living in the United Kingdom, United, Northern United States, Canada, we're also all vitamin D deficient because for six months of the year, we're not making vitamin D. So this is something where I suggest that A, you eat more oily fish, egg yolks, things like that, because they're, they're vitamin D rich foods, but also supplementation. Um, mm -hmm. And the UK government, and I know other governments too, are actually requesting everyone to supplement vitamin D at the moment because it, it will help your immune system work better and not just against cancer, but also with COVID too. Yeah, that's amazing. I think I'd even seen recently some studies of, of vitamins and how a lot of times these kind of vitamin supplements, we don't need them and they're kind of scams, but every single study is showing vitamin D is something that we should all probably be taking. So I think that's really great advice, especially for, you know, for kids and, and babies as well. I've heard that's super important. So Absolutely. Um, starting young. Um, yeah, thank you for sharing that. And um, maybe as we wrap up, um, is there anything else you'd tell people with, uh, with the pandemic in mind right now in terms of like meeting this goal of trying to be a little bit more nutritious every day? Um, yeah, any, any last words of wisdom? So my whole thing, if ever I've asked my nutritionist, eat the rainbow. So try and eat as many different colors of fruits and vegetables as you can a day, because this means you'll get a wide variety of different um, vitamins and minerals but also it means each different color corresponds to different groups of antioxidants and, and and you also get a wide range of fiber so try and do that and i think using seasonal vegetable boxes is often cheaper it's better for the environment but it also really helps support our immune system so what we should be eating in october november is going to be slightly different to what you'd be eating in maybe may or june when it's asparagus season so we're probably not going to eat asparagus now but we're going to be eating all those lovely pumpkins and squashes and apples and you know root vegetables and things like that so that's those are my tips like really try and eat 30 different plant-based foods a week including salads legumes you know vegetables all those things but also eat the rainbow every day and i have a lovely chart and children love this where you have all the colors of the rainbow and like tick things off every day <laughs> now, maybe i'll share that with you <laughs> yeah i would love that well now i'm hungry and <laughs> very excited about eating lunch um, but Toral, thank you so, so much for joining me today to talk about nutrition, the immune system, and, and cancer as well. Um, we will share all of the links here, um, and you can check out Toral's uh, Instagram at this handle on the screen, so don't miss that if you don't follow her already. Um, and look out at Encora.ai Presents for more wellness topics coming out in the next couple of weeks. Uh, and remember, uh, the more you know, the more empowered you will be. Thanks so much. Thank you.